is it going, boys and girls? Welcome back to Key West Waterman. My name is Aaron Young. Today we are prepping for a overnight dry tortugas trip. Um, if you're unfamiliar, the dry tortugas are a little chain of islands way off of Key West. It's about I think about 65, 70 miles, depending on where you leave from. Um, just a magical place, but it's so far, and there's so much to do out there. We're gonna. Uh, I have my friends James and Lisa in town. If you've been keeping up with the recent videos, you've seen them. James is an amazing photographer. Lisa is an amazing diver. Um, and they wanted to get out there for a couple days. We're actually going to try. We normally do two days, one night. We're going to try and do three days, two nights. Um, but planning for a trip like that can be a little tricky. And there are some tricks and um, some things I do. I wanted to share. Maybe you guys find some of this interesting. But... We, today is Monday. We're leaving tomorrow, Tuesday morning. Um, but we're going to start prepping today and getting ready. And there's a couple things I wanted to show you along the way, maybe. Maybe you'll learn something and maybe some of you guys will enjoy this. But I'm headed down to the boat right now. We um, get some ice and gas going. So I will see you down there. First thing I like to do when I'm doing an overnight trip, cool the coolers first. I don't fill them all the way up, put just a little bit of ice in each. A warm cooler will burn your ice really fast, so I like to kind of season them, if that makes sense. So because we're going three days, typically I'm good with my Yeti in the floor, and then I've got a drink cooler back there, but because we're going three days I'm gonna bring two extra things of ice but each of these I'll throw a basket of ice in and like I said just get some cool I like to let it go six eight hours if I can overnight uh, before I pack them completely because like I said that warm cooler the, the foam or the insulation in there burns that ice a lot faster if it's hot so that is step number one so next we're gonna go and grab some fuel um, and generally speaking I like to get fuel early in the morning I feel like Maybe I fabricated this in my head. I don't know if this is a real thing. I feel like gasoline expands quite a bit when it gets hot, um, just from using hand cans and uh, fuel bladders and whatnot. And down here in South Florida, especially the uh, in the Florida Keys, there's not a lot of gas tanks that are underground. So in the afternoon, uh, the marina's gas tanks are above ground. They get really hot. I feel like the gas expands and you may get a little less out of it, but I don't know. If there's a petroleum engineer out there, maybe they can verify or tell me I'm full of it but long story short I like to get gas in the early early morning when the tanks are still cool I am all topped off on fuel um, right now at today's fuel prices my boats about 1200 bucks to fill up I, I have a 27 open um, and typically these boats I believe have three tanks but whoever built mine added a fourth and I'll show you. Normally this hatch right here is uh, just storage or another like uh, ice box or something. But they actually put a fuel tank there. I think it's 45, 50 gallons. I normally don't run my tanks to empty, so I don't know exactly where they are. I have a center tank that's about 105, two saddles that are 50, 55, and then um, I have a 45-ish front tank. So fueled up um, and ready to go. The boat gets really heavy when you put all this fuel in it, so your economy goes down a little bit, but that's just a part of part of these overnight trips and long runs but um, coolers are being chilled boat is full of gas um, I'm gonna run home we got to do a big uh, food store run get all our um, food and drinks for the trip and I'm gonna run home and go through my camping gear just make sure I have everything it's been a while since I've been out here so out to the fort so run through everything make sure we have it and I'll uh, show you guys the remainder of the process all right, so I'm back at the house going through some of the camping stuff. It's actually been a while since I camped, so I wanted to run through everything, make sure I have everything I need, but I just said I just bring in the box. Um, I do like to bring, if I can and we have the space, I like to bring these containers that snap. Um, on a lot of the islands, we have raccoons. Um, the dry tortugas where we're going actually doesn't, I've never seen any raccoons, but there are palm rats. Uh, if you don't know what a palm rat is, it's essentially just a giant rat that lives in a palm tree. 
and they're, they're stranded on an island. So anything that smells or looks like food, they're going to rummage through and they will chew through it. So I bring I bring my camping gear in this just to, just to store it in. And then um, once we're unpacked, we put our dry food in here and we snap it down and the palm rats can't get to it. So they are handy. Uh, if space isn't of the essence, we actually only, there's only three of us going on this trip. Unfortunately, Madeline cannot come. Uh, she has some real estate stuff she has to handle. Um, so it'll just be James and Lisa and I. So we've got a little extra space. Um, so I'm gonna bring this. I normally, on, on my camping trips, I normally just sleep on the ground. I'm not a big fan of um, bringing a tent. It's one more thing to bring, uh, one more thing to unpack and, and break down. Um, I normally sleep on the ground. It's less to deal with, and I like looking at the stars. Out there in the dry tortugas, there's, there's nothing like the stars. There's no light around, so um, it really is a sight to see. Uh, I typically sleep on I have a little, this isn't it, this is actually a mosquito net. I'm gonna bring this just in case. I typically sleep on one of those little sleeping mats. You just blow air in them, they roll up like this small. They're really thin. Um, this is a mosquito net, but the older I get, the more my more my back gives me grief. So I actually just got this online. This is a sleeping mat, but because you know I have the extra space, I'm gonna try this out. It actually has a little bit of memory foam in it and you put air in it. So hopefully this will be a little better to sleep on. Uh, I'm gonna bring that. I have a little, this is just a little pillow. They, they blow up, fill with air. Um, I like to bring a sheet just in case, just get covered up. If it does get chilly, you get a breeze. Um, and then just some extra clothes to sleep in and uh, a towel or two somewhere. But that's about it as far as camping goes. And then obviously we're gonna have cooking utensils and all that. We're gonna go through all that stuff. We'll have charcoal. Normally bring like one pan just to, to cook some fish in and um, some utensils and whatnot. But um, just wanted to show you what I bring to sleep. Pretty straightforward. Um, and we'll continue the packing process. Forgot my little GoPro stick, so I'm holding this by hand. Um, starting the pack, the actual packing process of getting everything in the boat. James and Lisa are at the store gathering some food. Gonna start throwing stuff on the deck. This trip is actually gonna be nice because I'm, about, I'm gonna be able to leave stuff out. Typically we wanna stow everything and hide it all. But because we are going to the, the fort first and dropping stuff off because we're spending the day in the sanctuary. The first day we're spending in the sanctuary doing some videos and some photography. Um, we'll be able to get all this stuff out of the boat. Normally, like I said, we want the deck clear. Day one, we normally spearfish all day, head into the fort in the evening, but we're gonna run straight there, drop everything off and um, clear the deck and make the boat a lot lighter. Um, but I did want to show you, this ice has been sitting in these for about six, seven hours. Uh, definitely did cool the cooler off all the way, but you can see we already lost about 40, 30, 40% of the ice I put in there from this morning, but that's what it's supposed to do. Just kind of pre-chill the coolers. I've noticed it really helps uh, making that ice last a lot longer if you cool the coolers beforehand. But I'm gonna start throwing stuff in here. Maybe I'll set a camera up here for a little time lapse or something but we are getting there so another uh, very important step that I don't always mention but it needs to be mentioned is uh, double check all of my safety equipment. So I do carry an EPIRB on the boat, especially on these longer trips. Um, I think it is best to carry one. I just did my little self-test on that, make sure she's alive and kicking. Um, I do have a handheld VHF. This also does have a, uh, a locator device in it as well. Um, if I, we are under distress, I can get a distress call out and it will drop our location. Just to, like have a backup. EPIRB is kind of the primary, but like to have this in the boat, make sure the battery's fully charged, check all my flares. Um, just something else I like to do on these long overnight trips. While we're packing foods. This doesn't need to be cold, but these are for the ceviche. So are these, but they don't need to be cold. Ceviche. Yeah, those, don't, those can be room temperature. Look who's here. Loser. Loser. <laughs> I got you being, I got you being mean on camera. <laughs> um, yeah, that should be. I would think. 
So th this stuff is just going to be chilling tonight, and then when we pack ice in the morning, we're going to move yep. all cold stuff to that one. Pack this completely full, pack the back completely full, and pack the floor completely full, and I think we should be good. I may bring this one just in case. We'll see. We'll see how I feel in the morning. We got snacks. Now this is all stuff. Oh, we need a can opener. Can opener? I think that, I think oh, those are complimentary at the fort. Old. He's a little refrigerator. Oh, you should have come and taken a look at our fridge. So we're actually bringing more fresh water than we normally would because we're going to have so many fancy cameras. I'm going to leave this, I plugged this up and left it, um, or filled it up with fresh water so we'll be able to dunk the big cameras in there. Since we're going to be out there for a few days, you don't want the fancy cameras sitting with salt water on them. Hopefully that'll stay. We're going to see. Alright, we are locked and loaded. We're gonna to top off on ice tomorrow morning. And we'll be on our way. We'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> Looks like a slicker out there. Load is loaded. Let's get going. We are locked and loaded. Got James and Lisa here, you know them. Got some big fancy cameras, all kinds of snacks, gas, ice, diving gear. We have 70.9 miles. That is the run over to the fort. We're gonna run over to Garden Key, which is where the actual fort is. Drop everything off and get the fun started got some great weather hopefully it cooperates all right y'all ready let's go if you forgot anything it's too late miles from the actual fort on dry tortugas or in the dry tortugas um, if you're not familiar everything around the dry tortugas within like seven to nine miles depending on which direction you go is protected sanctuary and you're not allowed to spearfish so before we get into the park uh, we want to grab a fish make sure we have something for dinner so we're going to do a quick stop before we go drop all our camping gear off uh, and see hopefully if we can find something to eat Yeah, it's moving pretty good, Lisa, so just do your best when you drop to drop like kind of forward, if that makes sense. Obviously not straight forward, you're going to kill your dive, but... Oh, it's over a can here. Welcome. 
Welcome back underwater, everybody. There were some nice kingfish swimming around, and you're probably wondering why we didn't shoot it or shoot one of them. A um, couple of reasons. Not my favorite table fare. They are edible. We smoke them, make fish dip. I uh, just had something else in mind, and the current was actually really, really moving here. And that um, a kingfish is being as fast and as powerful as they are. A kingfish is not a fish you want to fight with that heavy a current. Uh, but just to be safe, we did leave James in the boat. We did have a tagline out just in case one of us were to get swept away fighting a fish. James would be able to pull up the anchor and circle back and pick us up. They're kings. They're like 20 pound kings. Man, I just saw the perfect eater yellow jack at the end of my dive. There's, um, I know those kings probably look tempting, Lisa, but there's two really big reef sharks. Just a uh, fair warning. There's a pretty good chance they'd probably eat it. So this is my second drop and after this clip I'm actually going to play a surface clip where you can see how we safety in this situation because with such heavy current it can be tricky. Um, and maybe somebody will learn something. James pulled a camera out and took a clip of us breathing up and dropping. It's just a little different with, with, with that much current. So I get down to depth, and you can see an amberjack here, but behind the amberjack, I'm not lining up on the amberjack. I'm lining up on the yellowjack, or leaning into it, not lining up. And I was trying to get that yellowjack to turn. Unfortunately, it didn't. So I'm kind of scanning around, just seeing if there's any other options. And I don't know why. I feel like these things always just sneak up behind me and swim right up to me. This is an African pompano comes right up to me. I actually slowed that clip down and the shaft was in the fish before it actually completely left the gun. And this is a smaller fish. I, I'd i like to say I wouldn't have shot it if it was a bigger fish, but I don't know. I know I can stop a smaller fish a little better. With there being this much current um, and having a fish on it is a little tricky. We always talk about line management, trying to stay clear of that line. So what I'm doing now is I've got actually the, the tag line and my reel line in the same hand, but just in separate fingers. And I'm holding on to the tag line so I'm not leaving the boat. And just pulling that reel line through my hand, just trying to get that fish up as quick as possible. You can see there's a Goliath coming up and trying to eat it. I've actually had goliaths eat big fish, 40, 50 pound fish. I've had goliath groupers eat permit and cobia and stuff. You'd be surprised what they can get down. Just make sure you stay clear of my line, Lisa. So obviously my biggest concern is predators, sharks. Uh, the goliath actually dropped back down and got the fish high enough up. And again, got that tagline in one hand, my reel line in the same hand, but through a different finger. And I'm just kind of threading it through using my finger as a break so that fish can't get, once I pull that line through, the fish can't get any farther out. Uh, and I luckily was able to get that fish up to the surface. Yeah, baby. Or I wouldn't have shot it if it was a big one. It was a perfect little eater. I knew I could put the brakes on it on a smaller fish. I was lining up on a yellow jack and I turned around. They're both just swimming right up to me. I was like, well, I can't not shoot that, right? <laughs> Sounds good to me. That is dinner right there, baby. Oh, thank you, buddy. Thank you, thank you. So wait, you see that Goliath almost tried to eat him? I 
I was kind of nervous because it was such a smaller or uh, such a small AP comparatively. Um, he he just dropped them. Yeah, you can see he had a little bit of a see this right here. Just a little tag. I mean he's 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 well over legal, but um, yeah, he was a little a little new. Per like perfect eater. I would if it would have been a big I. I say I wouldn't have shot, I probably still would have, but it wouldn't have went that well. Yeah. That would have been bad if that was a big one. So we had what we needed. I just, out of curiosity, wanted to do one more drop. See if I saw anything else cool. And I had initially wanted a yellow jack because they're great for ceviche and they're great cooked. They're great always. And it's funny that big old school of yellow jacks comes up. And uh, actually the other African pompano came back. But the main goal here, we weren't trying to actively fill the cooler this early. We just wanted to make sure we had enough to eat while we were out there. a buffet line there was a dozen yellow jacks the AP came up there's a nice grouper on the bottom all right so here's a little top view of how we safety uh, when there's this much current you can see both of us breathing up holding on to the back of the boat Lisa peels off does her drop and I let the current just take me along and uh, safety here from the top and I float back and keep an eye on her once uh, she returns from her dive we both swim over and grab that tagline and we just kind of repeat that process Well, that could have not gone any better. Um, second drop. We were just, I was honestly hoping for something decent snapper or a yellow jack or something. Just something so we've got food for this evening. But second drop, nice African pompano swam up. In my opinion, one of the best eaten fish in the ocean. And it's a perfect one. Not too big. That way we can eat it. This will be perfect. for We'll have food for the next two days. So the rest will just be fun. Um, mission accomplished. We got a. Um, we're actually going to stow these. So once you go, once you enter the park, you have to have all your spear fishing equipment stowed away. You can have like snorkel stuff out, but whatnot. But you can't have your spear fishing equipment on deck for obvious reasons. But um, we're going to finish up the run, get our camping stuff unpacked, and we'll show you the dry tortugas. Hurricane took a lot of the docks out. Uh, last September, maybe. <laughs> and here we are. Dry Tortugas National Park. This is, we're on Garden Key where the actual fort is. Normally you can moor up right here and just unload stuff, but that last hurricane we had last year did quite a bit of damage that they haven't fixed yet. So they got a lot of it closed. And if 
by chance you're not familiar with this area, maybe I'll put some links um, for the Dry Tortugas and the fort and some of the history on it. If you're into that kind of stuff, you can read up on it and educate, educate yourself a little bit. But here we are. What a lovely, lovely place. It's a little busy during the day because they've got that big ferry that drops people off, but in the evenings it gets a lot quieter. We don't spend a lot of time here during the day. It's only in the morning and the evening, but here's our campsite. We were unloaded. Huh? Okay. We we're unloaded. Um, I think this is going to be the end of this video. Do maybe just the packing and logistics and traveling day. And we are hitting the ground running tomorrow. Doing all kinds of filming. Like I said, we've got the fancy cameras. We're going to spend some time in the sanctuaries. And we'll do some spear fishing as well. So show you what we can. And all in all, hopefully we have a good time. Appreciate you tuning in. Any questions, as always, leave them in the comments. I'm sweating my butt off. I like this. And I will see you on the next one. Later. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Ta-da. Ta that was pretty cool.